Super excited to tell you how to make a jig that allow you to use dry erase markers with your CNC to write on whiteboards. It's very easy to do, low cost, and it's a lot of fun. So with that being said, what do you need? You need some three quarter inch PVC pipe. This is schedule 40. You can buy it at home improvement stores, usually in pieces this size for about two bucks. The next thing you're gonna need is some Expo dry erase markers. Maybe you already have some around. This one will slip easily inside this three quarter inch PVC pipe. And then we're going to take a quarter inch drill and we're going to drill a hole through both sides of the PVC pipe. The middle of the hole is gonna to be to the bottom of this, something like that. We need some rubber bands. And one of the rubber bands, we're going to thread through this hole and take it through the other side and then we're gonna tie it around. If you wanna save yourselves a little bit of hassle, then go ahead and just take a paper clip and just hook it onto the rubber band like so. Make sure you got it squished pretty good. And you can use that to kind of help thread this, thread this through the other side. You can uh, take that paper clip and straighten it out and then pull it back through. Make sure you don't lose your rubber band in the process, like so. So we have the rubber band through the PVC pipe and then you just need to do a knot. Doesn't really matter what knot, just don't have it come loose. So it looks something like that. We're almost there. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your dry erase markers. If I was to just put this down in here right now and it would, it would hit that rubber band and it would push back. But the problem is it would also just fall out of here and it would be way too wobbly. So we need to wait, need a way to make a shim. Rather than 3D print something or cut something on my CNC, we're gonna do it the easy way. And the easy way is just take the cap off and up here on the curved part where it's thick, you're just gonna take the rubber band and you're just gonna keep twisting it over and over and over and we're going to make our own little gasket and try to keep it so it's not just gonna push off on that curved part. So it looks something like that. And then when you push it down in there, like so, it'll be a nice friction fit. And if you push up more, this uh, rubber band that's coming through the center is gonna push back and it'll keep it from going up inside, but it still has give as you shove your CNC down. So uh, it should work rather nicely. Then we need a way to mount this inside our router system. And here's the, uh, the cleverness of this jig. What you're gonna do is unhook your spindle or router, totally remove it, and whatever mount you have for your particular CNC, you're gonna cut a wooden disc just uh, with a, a diameter just ever so slightly smaller than the opening so that we can clamp it down just like we did our router inside uh, our CNC mount. So even though this is supposed to be a 65 millimeter mount, I did 63.8 millimeters of the outer diameter of this wood disc. This is just pine. Uh, it has a thickness of 19.8 millimeters in thickness. And then I need an inner hole uh, that I cut out on my CNC that is the right diameter to friction fit on this PVC pipe. Uh, I ended up doing 17.2 millimeters. And so when I put it on here, it's tight. If you made it too loose, you can always put some uh, hot glue on there after the fact, or you can put some super glue or something like that and make it permanent. I prefer to make it so that it's removable. And believe it or not, that essentially is what you need. Then you're gonna go ahead and set it down into your router mount. And then you're going to adjust the height of this so that we're far enough down that we're gonna be able to press on our whiteboard surface. And then we're gonna tighten it down just like you would your router inside your CNC, it's still loose. So we need to tighten it up more. Tighten both top and bottom. And that's good. And if I push up, you can see it's got the give. Now, how do we use this? It's way easier than you think. All you have to do is 
put in whatever design you want in your CAD software, and then you're gonna do a profile line on pass, and you're gonna use a depth of cut of two millimeters all at once. You should be able to go pretty high speed, uh, probably 100, 150 inches per minute. You can try to see uh, how well your CNC holds up to it and then make sure that you have a safe Z height of maybe three or four millimeters. So essentially it's gonna come down, it's gonna push enough pressure to go down two millimeters onto your whiteboard surface, and then you're going to run your regular CNC code. You can do uh, the, the pass in one pass, you don't need to do multiple passes. If you want, you can even try just a one millimeter depth and see how that works. Go ahead and pull that out, and you can put in another color Expo marker and run your next series of code for whatever color that marker is and continue on. If you want to get fancy with this, you can also take and rather than doing a profile line on cut, you can go ahead and do a pocket tool path and just make sure that your diameter of the head that you have here is going to be the same as your what your drill bit that you select in your tool paths. There you go. And then next video, I'll show you how to take this and use it to make geometric patterns using G-code. And then we're gonna take that ultimately and we're gonna transfer it into our axes to do our loose tenon joinery. So hopefully you'll go ahead and make one of these. It's gonna help you with the next part. And I think you can have a lot of fun. Maybe you could even make yourself a really cool Christmas card for someone around you. God's presence is his present in the present. Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoyed the dry erase whiteboard jig. I'll see you soon.